Saturnino Heran is a mixed indigenous Mexican and Swiss descent and lived in Aguascalientes, Mexico throughout most of his formative years. Heran's father owned the only bookstore in the city and was the professor of bookkeeping at the Academy of Science. Heran has always showed extraordinary talent in painting, drawing, but it was not till two years after his father's passing at the age of 18 when he finally moved to Mexico City to study painting at the Academy de San Carlos with Julio Ruelas. When Eran enrolled to the academy, he skipped all the elemental classes of drawing and went directly to the area of professionals. Eran was a very influential artist of his time. His generation marked him as one of the painters that embody the nation's soul through his art. Eran was involved in two movements. One, indigenismo, which promoted the elevation and respect of indigenous people and culture. Two, Mexican modernism, which was an artistic movement that focused on honoring the country's working and agrarian classes, the indigenous population, and pre-Hispanic traditions, making the history of Mexico accessible to the general public. Eran was a founding member of Indigenismo and Mexican Modernism that later paved the way for artists yet to come, like Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, and Jose Clemente Orozco. Eran passed on October 8th of 1918, and it is said that when Eran passed, his last words were, Doctor, no me deje morir porque México necesita mi pintura, which translates, Doctor, don't let me die. Mexico needs my paint. Eran believed that a transformation of the country needed to take place. He wanted the change not through violence or arms, but through art, and aimed for education of the pueblos mexicanos with each piece. So now, let's take a look at some paintings that made Eran's mark. First, we have a painting named La Leyenda de los Volcanes, or The Legend of the Volcanoes. In the painting, Eran speaks on the Viceroyalty of New Spain and touches on the living circumstances between the indigenous and European folk. In the image, we see three different segments. The first block, an indigenous man and a European woman, are pictured embracing each other. And in the second, the woman again this time, in distress, with a seemingly older man who would be her father. And in the last, the indigenous man kneel to the ground in sadness. The inscription of the painting reads, The legend tells a story of a white princess who loved an Indian prince with infinite love. Her father, a severe old man, formed his rebellious daughter into a mountain, and the tears of her lover ran unstoppable before the clearly defined peaks that forever would guard the prince's heart. In the original tale, the princess was named Iztacihualt of Tlaxcaltecas, and the Indian prince was a warrior of the same tribe, named Popocatépetl. They both died from the grief of not being able to be together. Their bodies next to each other eventually covered in snow, hardened, and became mountains. In Eran's interpretation of the story, he used race rather than class as a barrier for this love story. The princess in this painting being a European woman and the warrior still an indigenous man, the artist brings up race in this painting to show a national tragedy. The only way for Indian people to move off social classes, culture, and politics is to assimilate to mestizaje. Eran art style has European influence. The movement of the bodies and expressions used are with the intention of sharing and representing their emotions. Hedan did a very good job at individualizing each person, but the scenery and use of space in the back has just as much importance. The openness of the mountains and lands are just as delicate and sensual as the human body. Hedan uses color to show this as well. The colors found in the earth and sky are also found in the bodies of the humans. Here is my own interpretation of Hedan's painting. The title of this painting is La Ofrenda, or The Offering. During the making of this painting in year 1913, the country was going through conflicts as well as government corruption. And I never participated in conflicts. He was more so focused on representing indigenismo and the working class and the everyday life of Mestizo Mexico. In the painting, there is shown what could be a family. There are two men standing upright, one young holding a pile of marigolds and the other older looking onwards with a paddle on their shoulder. Behind them, another man sitting down. And just in front of the men is a woman wearing a, a rebozo with a baby on her back. Next to her, another little girl making eye contact with the viewer. All persons in the painting look to be very tired. The miracles cover the bottom half of the canoe, which alludes to the celebration of Dia del Muerto, or Day of the Dead. It gives light to not only Mexican traditions, but also the European influence. As we have studied in this course, before the arrival of the Spaniards, ofrendas look very different. With European influence, ofrendas are more tied to the Catholic Church. The diagonal lines at the bottom of the painting and the vertical lines to the left center the view of the spectator to an indigenous man holding a bush of miracles over his shoulder. The miracles are extremely vibrant and saturated in color, but it does not overwhelm the painting or take away from the rest of the details. The lighting and the reflection coming off the water behind them makes the scene look as if it's the end of the family's workday, transporting all the flowers they collected back home. The people in the painting could also represent the past in the older man, today in the young man, and tomorrow in the baby. The focal point of the painting being the young man 
along with the stance, could represent the strong character and drive of the working class. Irang was a master at turning the mundane onto canvases into works of art. And here's my own version of Irang's painting. To end off, Saturino Eran was truly an artist of the people. He dedicated 14 years of his short life representing his community and honoring the history of his people.